Hello, good morning to all. Today I'm going to discuss about the gateway GPRS or GPRS support node GGSN. Like GGSN, the, this entity was also first introduced into the GPRS network. And the gateway GPRS support node SGSN is the central element within the UMTS packet switch network and it handles interworking between the UMTS packet switch network and external packet switch network. Next is your SAR elements. These SAR elements of the 3G UMTS core network architecture include the following network entities. First is HLR, VLR, EIR and AUC authentication center. HLR it database contains all the administrative related information about the user. And the VLR is the visitor location register. This component is generally uh, implemented in connection with MSC and it holds information related to every mobile station that roams into the area serviced by the associated MSC. That the visitor location register that means when a uh, subscriber changes location from home location to enter into the another location, the VLR record the data. Equipment Identity Registry EIR is the entity that decides whether a given U equipment may be allowed onto the network and each UA equipment has a number known as International Mobile Equipment Identity. Next is Authentication Center AUC. The AUC is a protected database that contains the secret key also contains the user UMSA card. That means authentication for use to authentication. Next is UMTS channel structure. This 3G UMTS uses CDMA techniques or WCDMA as its multiple access technology. The channel carried as categorized into three. First is your logical channel, physical channel and the transport channel. In the logical channel, the logical channels define the way in which the data will be transferred and physical channel uh, carry the payload data and give govern the physical characteristics of the signal. And transport channel, 3G transfer channels along with the logical channel again defines the way in which the data is transferred. Now come to the logical channel. On the logical channel, uh, there is the broadcast control channel BCCS that means used on the downlink. The channel broadcast information to US user equipment relevant to the cell. Paging control channel PCCS downlink. This channel is associated with the PICH and is used for paging messages. Then dedicated control channel DCCH and the common control channel CCCH, shared channel control channel SHCCH and dedicated traffic channel DTCH, common traffic channel CTCH. And these are the logical channels are used for uplink and the downlink. Next come to the physical channels. Primary common control physical channel PCCPS downlink and this uh, Channel continuously broadcast system identified and access control information. Secondary common control physical channel SP, SS, uh, SSCPH is also for downlink. Physical random access channel for uplink. Dedicated physical data channel for up and downlink both. And dedicated channel physical control channel up and downlink both. And physical downlink share channel downlink. Next another channel, these are the physical common packet channels, synchronization channel. The synchronized channel is used is allowing UA to synchronize with the network. Common pilot channel, CPICH and uh, accusation indicator channel, AICH, paging indication channel, PICH, also SPCH, CPCH, status indication channel, collision detection channel as or a channel assignment indication channel. Next come to the transport channels, dedicated transport channel DCH open downlink. This is used to transfer data to a particular UE. User equipment is UE has its own DCH in each direction. Next is your broadcast VCS downlink. This channel broadcasts information to the US in the cell to enable them to identify the network and the cell. Forward access channel FACS downlink. This is the channel carries data or information to the US that are registered on the system. And there may, may be more than one uh, FACS for sale as they may carry packet data. Paging channel PCS downlink. This channel carries messages that uh, uh, alert the UE to, in, uh, to incoming calls, SMS messages, data sessions, or required maintenance such as reg re, uh, registration. Then your random access channel reacts uplink. This channel carries required for service from US trying to access the system. And another uplink, uplink common packet channel, then a downlink 
SAG channel DSCH. Next come to the handover process like GMS, GSM mobile system, UMATS handover also there. There are three basic types of handover. handover uh, first is your hard handover, soft handover and softer handover. In your hard handover, this form of handover is essentially the same as that used to the network where one link is broken and another, another is established. Right, but in soft handover, this form of handover is a more uh, gradual and the UV communication that means your equipment communication simultaneously with more than one node B or base station during the handover process. Softer handover, not for no, a full form of UMTS handover, but the UE communicates with more than one sector managed by the same node B. Come to the hard handover. The basic methodology behind hard handover is relatively straightforward. There are a number of basic stages of hard handover. The network decides a handover, uh, handover is required dependent upon the signal strength of the existing link and the strength of broadcast channels of adjacent cells. The link between the existing node B and the U is broken. A new link is established between the new node B and the UA. Although this is a simplification of the process and it is basically what happens, the major problem is that any difficulties in re-establishing the link will cause the handover to fail and the call connection to be dropped. UMTS had handovers may be used in number of instances. When moving from one cell to an adjacent cell that may be on a different frequency, when implementing a mode change that is from FD to TDD mode for example. Next is your soft handover. Soft handover occurs when UA is in the overlapping coverage area of two cells. Two cells. Links to the two base station can be established simultaneously and this way the UA can communicate with two base station by having more than one link active during the handover process. In view of the fact that soft handover use several simultaneous links, it means that the adjacent cells must be operating on the same frequency or channel as UAs do not have multiple transmitters. When the UA and node B undertake a soft handover, uh, the UV receives signals from the two node BS and combines them using the REC receiver capability available in the signal processing of the UA. In the uplink, the situation is more complicated as the signal combining uh, cannot be accomplished in the node B as more than one node B is involved. Instead, combining is accomplished on a frame by frame basis. The best frames are selected after each interleaving period and the selection is accomplished by using the outer loop power control algorithm which means the signal to noise ratio. Once the soft handover has been completed, the links to be to the old node B are dropped and the UV communicates continues to communicate with the new node B. So this is the soft handover. And the last one is your softer handover. A form of handover effort where softer handover is really a special form of soft handover. And it is a form of soft handover that occurs when the new radio links that are added are from the same node B. This occurs when several sectors may be served from the same node B, thereby simplifying the combining as it can be achieved within the node B and not require linking further back into the network. In UMT, softer handover is only possible when UAE can hear the signal from two sectors. Uh, sort by the same node B. So these are all about this chapter number six. So thank you from today's uh, from next class. We are going to discuss about chapter number seven. Thank you to all.